understand at first and can be difficult to learn at first. Uh, but if you've had, I know some guys here have had martial arts experience, right? So I think I mentioned the other day when I demonstrated the theory, when you pivot thrust, it's just what you do when you punch in karate, right? Starts with the lower body first, then the middle body, then the upper body, then the arm last, right? So here's how it works. I'll demonstrate it and talk about what they are while I do it, kind of in slow motion. First thing is, I like to think of my, my left arm here, it's for this drill, my left side, sort of like a door, the, the, the door jam where the hinges connect to the wall. And the right side is being a door, and the, and the right side closes. It's one way you can think of it. It's actually a swing map drill we'll probably have time for this afternoon called Open the Door, Close the Door. Um, but what the elements of the pivot thrust are, are, there's a little tilt this way. There's an additional second tilt we call 2B. 2A, what I was just talking to you about, Art. 2A is here. 2B is when you get to get set. There's another second, very, very important part of the golf swing. We call it the key move. I discovered this about eight years ago. Your shoulder girdle rocks, left shoulder up about two to four inches, depending on the club. The shorter the club, the less tilt, the longer the club, the more tilt. Okay, like that, right? So it's this little move here, that move. I'll show you some photos later on this. You can see it for yourself. Tiger, you can really see it, sir. Contract really fast and go like that, okay? That keeps, that's the main thing during this very fast, powerful, dynamic motion that keeps you in balance, okay? That move. And then fourth, there's obviously rotation. And the rotation is, in, is, this part is in sequence. It's not simultaneous, it's sequential. But these things are spaced like a hundredth of a second apart. So from a feel stand, core, your belly, your oblique abs. Your oblique abs pick up some of the speed from your hips. So now, now the abs have more speed than they were if they just contracted by themselves. There's a transfer of momentum from your hips to your abs, from your abs to your shoulders. So when your shoulders are spinning, the fastest of the three by far, it's not just the muscles in your shoulders that are causing the spin, it's also muscles in the abdomen, that energy flows to your shoulders, and the muscles from your hips is flowing into your shoulders. So your, your shoulders are just like tearing through the air. Think of Tiger, his shoulders go, here's his shoulders at the top of the back swing, also they go, it's total just poof, just like that, just this quick little swivel of the shoulders. And from a kind of a common sense standpoint, that's what, should, that's what you should think about when it hits the ball. More specifically, your right shoulder, making a swiveling motion through and past the ball position. Hit the ball with your right shoulder. We call that the inner primary power source, meaning it's what most good players, if you ask them what they feel, they'll say, I, hit, I feel like I hit the ball with my shoulder. Some will say hips, some will say belly, right? But most people will identify their shoulders, particularly the right shoulder, because the right shoulder is behind the ball, the left shoulder is ahead of it, because I'm not, you know, not that kind of a teacher, but it's one of the dozen things in this program. If you want to get better really fast, reconceptualize your notion of what hits the ball, what your primary power source is from a wrist throw or an arm pull or an elbow pull to a right shoulder spinning motion. Now, some of you are going, but wait a minute, isn't that over the top? It is if you don't tilt to the right. So in other words, when you're over the top as a shoulder motion, not just an arm motion, which some people have played, like a lot of good players, that's, that that's the case. And you can learn to hit the ball with your right shoulder and not pull it, not come over the top, if you had that other piece, which is the tilt part, right? Okay, so you, everybody get it? It's transfer of momentum, hips to, to belly, belly to shoulder. So the shoulders are moving the fastest of, of the, any part of the pivot. They're just, they're tearing through the air with lightning speed. I was watching Michelle on the Golf Channel last night, and She's, even, she's moving her shoulders faster now from what I could tell from watching her hit like, you know, thousands of shot, shots in January and February. Every day when I was teaching, she was right there next to us. She's, she's moving faster, and I'm guessing because she's doing this physical training with her. They got a full-time physical trainer working with her every day after school. She, does, she goes to the gym and she works out with weights and does, you know, core exercises. You watch her, she hits the top of her backswing. It's like a blur. She's here, and all of a sudden she's here. You don't even, it's like a, you don't even see it so fast. The faster you can spin those shoulders and the more fully, not only the more distance you're going to get, but once an object's moving in a certain direction, it tends to keep moving that way, right? Yep. You're using physical dynamic forces, right? Because if, if you get started down in the right top of backswing position, that first little move of transition is so important. If you get started down, just fire. It's all going to go in the same direction pretty much because there's no time for your, for your conscious mind to change anything. Right? With our normal swing, we swing slowly, we're always trying to manipulate some body part or the club to try to get back what we think proper impact is. And all we do is interfere with this dynamic force, momentum and inertia, right? 
along with centrifugal force and rotary force and other forces. So use the forces, Luke. 